As an angler, I'm at my absolute most confident when I can position my rig over a, a nice, clean, firm, hard area. Those kind of areas, they're often created by the fish, uh, maybe through anglers baiting an area, potentially using it as a rubbing spot. And the type of substrates I'm talking about are things like gravel, clay, chalk. Basically, my confidence is at an all-time high because I know when I position the rig on that spot, there's no other debris, there's no weed, there's nothing to potentially not allow my rig to settle and lay true on the bottom. And it just gives me a lot of confidence. I can then bait accordingly over the top of that spot with a mix to get the fish really grubbing around. Because there's no silt or silkweed, all those particles and bits will settle down on top of that spot and it just creates a natural dinner table where the carp can come in and feed happily. Of course, there's a number of different rig options you could use within this scenario, but for me, my number one go-to setup is the Slip D. It's a dead, dead simple rig to tie. I personally fish it in conjunction with a, an inline lead setup and a, a nice big long length of Klingon leader to pin everything down. I'm gonna quickly run through with you now exactly how I tie it to help get me bites over those nice, clean, hard, firm areas. To create the Slip D, the first step is to take a length of armor link. I personally like to use the gravel version, but if there is some low-lying silkweed or some silt on top of the spot, I will opt for the silt version. Breaking strain, more often than not, I'll go for the 25 pound. That may seem quite heavy, but it's thicker and it will never let me down should it touch any abrasive snags or, or stones or flints down on the bottom. I cut a length of that and then form a loop in it before taking my hook choice, which for this particular rig is a twister long shank. And this new long shank version really, really aids the hooking potential on this particular setup, allowing the bait to be blown further back down the shank of the hook when the fish do pick the rig up. I form a loop in the armor link and then pass it through the eye on the twister long shank before then taking a bait screw and passing that over the loop also. The loop's then passed over the bend of the hook and I start to create a knotless knot, whipping up the shank of the hook six times, going back over twice and just before I go back down through the eye, I'll take a micro boilie needle and remove the tag end, making it much easier for me to pass that final bit of braid through to complete this knotless knot setup. Next step is to take a little hook kicker. This is slid down the arm link and passed over the eye of the hook, just to aid with turning the hook when the fish again pick that rig up. It's important to consider your rig length whenever fishing in a situation like this over a nice hard firm bottom and especially over a mix of bait. Basically those fish will come in on the spot and they'll grub around, feeding very, very close to the bottom and moving very, very slowly. Thus I want them to pick the rig up and immediately tension the hook link and come into contact with the lead. So it can vary from time to time, but usually my hook link lengths are around 10 centimetres in length. To finish the rig off, I'll tie a double overhand loop knot in the end and leave the loop quite large to allow me to loop to loop that onto the swivel and also to fish a small PVA stick down the hook link itself. The rig itself is then fixed to a, an inline lead setup. Depending on the situation I'm fishing in, will either be a drop off inline or an inline mounted directly onto the leader. The leader setup is made with Klingon leader. It's incredibly abrasion resistant, splices really, really easily, and importantly, sinks like a stone, but best of all, will follow every single contour it's fished over, unlike more conventional lead core, which can kink and stuff across the bottom. The inline lead is a, a flat inline square, perfect for this situation where you're fishing over a nice, hard, firm area. It's unobtrusive on the bottom and just not so blatant in comparison to other lead setups. The inline square lead is slid down the length of Klingon leader and mounted over the top of a uni ring swivel. Finally, I place a tail rubber down the Klingon leader over the top of the plastic insert coming out of the top of the lead. To connect my Klingon leader to my bullet main line, I splice in a big loop at the end of the Klingon leader itself. And then in the main line, I'll create another loop and basically loop to loop those on there. It's very, very fast, very, very simple, and most importantly, nice and strong and reliable. So there you have it, the Twister Long Shank Slip D, a rig I've literally caught hundreds of carp on from all over the world. It's something I have utter confidence in. Most importantly, it's simple and easy to tie. Get it out there, guys. I'm sure you'll have a lot of luck on it too. Another mega one. Caught off a real hard, firm area over a load of Scopex Squid Flake, pellet, bits and pieces. Lowered in my Slip D rig with my Scopex Squid Culture look, mate. And yeah, they're there to be caught, guys. If you've not tried it, go grab yourself a bucket, get a little mix knocked up, go around, bait some spots in the edge, or find something out in the lake with a marker rod, somewhere nice, clean, and firm, and get yourself a slip D over the top of it with a culture look bait. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. <laughs>